What is up guys? It's The Real Deal. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we're going to be looking at Miscreated Monster, one of the OGs. He has been in the game since forever and he is still a really good champion. He's a hard carry for Spider. If you get him early to mid game, you are definitely going to be using him. Uh, we will sort of go through gear, skill and masteries and then we'll like hop into arena to test him out and do some spider runs as well. Uh, mine was actually built for spider and scarab um, for Doom Tower hard and you could use him on the hardest floor in this build. Be a great champion. And the reason you can use him for scarab is because he has shields on a shields for three turns and is on a three turn cooldown. And for this to work as well, he does need to be the fastest person on the team. But yeah, he's an absolute beast for this. And you just want to take a moment to appreciate his skin. Like, it is a really cool looking skin. I mean, he is an absolute baller. Love, love what's going on. The lightning and like sort of electricity sort of going through him. He's got this really cool, I don't know what it is. Is it a baseball bat? Um, but some sort of bat with, again, the electricity going through it. The only thing that really annoys me about him is his hand. If you look at his left hand, he's not even holding the bat. And he's, I think they were just, I don't know, for some reason they haven't given him fingers. He's just got a fist. But anyway, but other than that, he's still a cool looking champion and a great pull. So I've gone for Perception and uh, Double Immortal. You could go Triple Immortal as well. That's great on him. I mean, like the more HP he has, the better he'll be. The only reason he's in Perception is that it's going to give us speed and accuracy and you need accuracy to land his stun and you need, well, I needed speed so he could be the fastest person on my team for Scarab. So we're going to go through every single piece of gear and we've got, um, so sort of what we're looking for first of all is speed, then HP percentage, then accuracy and then sort of those are going to be our primary substats. Secondary substats could be crit rate or crit damage um, just to like you know bump up his damage so we've got speed again speed i mean that's a really nice piece uh, triple speed um so for the gloves we've got crit rate i mean if you're if you could get crit rate on the substats everywhere else these could be crit damage gloves or even hp gloves as well the more the hp has the better but crit rate is good on him as well because it just means he's going to do more damage help us like get through the waves faster and again it's going to help a lot with the spiderlings uh, HP on the chest because he is a HP champion. Uh, speed on the boots again because he's so fast um, for Scarab. You could easily swap these out for HP boots as well if you've got a lot of gear with triple rolls in it. Then we've got HP on the ring, uh, crit damage on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. And I, I feel like you should go for accuracy on the banner because you do want to land that stun. Total stats, we've got 69k HP. A um, little bit low on the defense, but it doesn't matter too much. I mean, you could bump that up to 3k or that 3.3k minimum sweet spot. I mean, overkill on the speed at 250. You could definitely tone that down to 200 to 220. Got him crit capped, which obviously is going to help him do so much damage. 145 crit damage and then 296 accuracy. So let's uh, have a look at his skills. Passive, Spooky Groan. Places a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn whenever an ally is attacked while under an ally protection buff. So he will throw out ally protection and it just means that he's going to be throwing out loads of fears, which is great for spidling control and it's also great for mobs in waves. His A3, it's alive! Places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for three turns. I mean, three turns on a full turn cooldown. That has to be one of the best ally protection buffs in the game for sure. Um, also heals this champion by 50% of their max HP. So that's really nice. I mean, if he's a little bit low, it means he's going to tank, uh, top up his her HP. Uh, then places a continuous heal buff on this champion for three turns. Really, really nice. It means that he's going to be soaking all that damage from ally protection. It's going to keep our teammates alive and he's just going to basically keep healing himself up 
is A2, Lightning Storm. Attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Uh, I wish this was like 75 or 100. Um, the game has moved on since he's been released, and there's a lot more AoE stun champions now that do have a 100% chance of landing stun. Places a shield buff uh, on all allies for three turns, up to 25% of the damage inflicted. So that is one of the reasons why you want him to do a lot of damage so we can um, get big fat shields on ourselves. His A1, Meaty Fists. Whoa, what, what a name. Uh, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 15% chance of placing stun for one turn. And fully booked, that is 25% and then has a 60% chance when fully booked of placing the big boy version of decreased defense debuff for one turn if the stun is placed. So this isn't going to land on bosses. I don't think there's any boss in the game that you can stun, um, but it's good for waves. So yeah, it's, it's nice. It will help you get through content a little bit faster. So mine has no awakenings, uh, but if I was to give him a blessing, no doubt it would have to be emergency heal so heals his champion whenever a shield buff placed on them expires is removed or is broken by an enemy attack and the value of the heal is equal to a proportion of this champion's max hp of course so obviously he's throwing out um shields on a three turn cooldown for three turns constantly and if it does break a little bit early it just means he's going to heal himself up and with that ally protection as well, obviously he's going to be taking loads of hits. And with this, it just means that he's just going to be constantly topped up with his HP. If you wanted to, you could go for a more damage route. So um, you could go crushing rend if you want him to do damage by himself. If you want him to be like a more support role and help your teammates, then cruelty. And that will just drop the, the damage of a target. And it means the rest of the team's going to do more damage to that target. So again, this will just help speed up runs. So for Masteries, we've got him in a PvE build. And again, I feel like PvE is his sweet spot. So we've got support. We uh taking Steadfast for more HP. Shield Bearer to increase the shields that we throw out. Uh, rapid response so when our shields come off cooldown or ally protection we've got a really good chance to boost our turn meter which is really really nice had to take laura steel um just so that we could um increase his speed and his accuracy on perception and also it's nice for immortal as well because get a little bit more hp out of it as well the offense tree standard standard stuff going on taking crit rate we're taking crit damage and we're just basically taking anything that is going to increase the damage that we do and we're going into war masters as well so we've looked at the gear we've looked at the skills we've looked at the masteries let's uh, test him out in arena and then we'll check him out in spider which is where he really does excel okay so i found this team it doesn't look particularly strong but i'm going to bring in kale just to try and make it like a more early free to play friendly um account okay let's see if we can land some stuns nice across the board uh, madame's gonna drop that defense throughout weekend open up with the a2 on kale wow we managed to get most of the team down i mean yeah that was seriously lucky to land the stuns with miscreated so a1 on miscreated doing decent damage to whoa <laughs> to udk obviously this is much lower account and if I was to use this like on a much stronger account, we would definitely struggle. All right, guys, I came across this really strong team, Yumiko, Wukong, and Gorgrid. Uh, I've had to bring in Hedgy just to try and lock them out. If Yumiko cuts in or goes before us, we are definitely going to struggle. But I'm hoping we can just sort of win that speed race. Nice. Um, Hedgy coming in clutch locking out most of the team so let's try and stun everyone first skull crown to do some damage and we got the w nice um again though you know we may have won that fight but i definitely don't feel like miscreated monster carried that much in that fight let's let's try and find another one okay so i found a much more mid-game uh team comp 
And I've brought in Madame again just because I want to see what sort of damage we can do with Miscreated if we drop that defense. Okay, I'm going to throw out Ally Protection. Oh, we did get stripped. Okay, so we've decreased defense. Let's get Baracus on it. Let's take out Lady Kimmy because she can be super annoying. Push back the Termita on High Cartoon. So, miscreated. Stepping up to the plate. Let's see what sort of damage we can do on the A2. And yeah, it's just not strong at all. Even if I was like to build him in a more nuke build, he just wouldn't hit hard enough. So he's definitely more of a support role. And I just feel like it's not relevant for Arena anymore these days. You know, there's stone skin and just, I don't know, there's just so many things that there's a good reason why stone, uh, stone skin, why stun is not in the meta anymore. So yeah, it's... Yeah, it's just not, you know, you can see like he doesn't do enough damage and the, like the CC that he's bringing isn't really enough. It's okay for early and mid game arena, but it's not going to help you late game. So yeah, we've looked at arena and we can see that it's not really his place, but we will take him into spider and just, yeah, watch him where he specializes. He is absolute beast for it. So we've got a pretty uh, simple team comp, two HP burners, two cold hearts, and then we're literally just going to rely on the miscreated monster to keep the team alive. Okay, so cold heart opening up. And look at those shields from miscreated monster. No one is getting through that. And you can see we've actually stunned every single target on the enemy squad. HP burns come out and they're going to slowly tick away on the spider boss. You can see that just took a huge chunk of damage right there. And this is a pretty, this is a pretty good team. Um, yeah, getting some work done. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like this is all we need. And miscreated monster is going to keep the team alive. I do want to see if we can try and do hard with miscreated. Um, I've never, never actually tried it. So yeah, we'll see how he gets on there. And now it's just a case of just taking out the boss. And yeah, Sissia just increasing the duration of HP burns on the boss. I think cold hearts are going to come in now. Heart seeker. And that's pretty much it. It's just going to start ticking away now. And we just need like one more HB burn activation from Sissia. And there we go. So one minute 30, that is not bad at all. And you can see we had no problems as well. And honestly, if we had like a bad run or something, Miscreate Monster would keep the team alive. To be fair, he did a lot of damage as well, like 1.4 mil damage. I and mean, it was definitely the lowest on the team, but obviously he's hitting those spiderlings like an absolute beast. You can see he's solo healing as well, done loads and loads of healing. But yeah, hard carry for Spider. So let, let's have a go and see if we can push him to his limits in a 25. So complete same team again, and we're just going to let it roll. Uh, the only problem with 25 is that you can't push the term meter back as far on the boss. So that is going to make things a little bit harder. And it means that uh, miscreated will struggle a little bit. And HP burns come out. R attack coming in. Those annoying spiderlings that just keep popping off. Doing a little bit of damage to the boss, which is nice. Chipping away. HP burn activation. 
I mean, one thing is I could definitely improve on this team is that there's no setup. And it really annoys me, but Sissia, for some reason, she always opens with her A2. Really, she should do the HP burns first on the A3 and then do um, her A2, which is the activation, um, drop defense, and weaken as well. So it's a little bit annoying. I don't understand why she does it in that order. You can see, like, the boss just went to hit us, literally did nothing. He cannot break through these shields. Big hit from. From Sissia there. Whoa. Heart Seekers popping off. And we're pretty much getting there. But you can see nothing is getting through us. And there's those the fears are popping off from miscreated and landing those stuns as well. Just so easy. So yeah, this is a really sort of, you know, and the other thing as well is like with Artac and Sissia, you could literally replace them with any other HP burn champion. So you, even epics there's loads and loads of good epic hp burn champions that could fill these roles and yeah that was pretty comfortable so one minute 46 not bad at all very very free to play friendly team um but yeah and you know he can be used in pretty much all level 20 dungeons probably not fire knight because he doesn't have like a multi-hitter but Dragon and Ice Golem, he will definitely help carrying that. And great for Doom Tower as well. Can be used in so much content. He is still a solid champion. Not the best, but he's still... You could definitely get some use out of him for Mer early and mid game. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace!